and welcome to another tutorial. Today we're looking at the alphabet mango icon tutorial. I have my mango on my left hand side, my wood texture in the middle and let's group these. My colors on the right hand side. We have a lot of colors in this tutorial so I'm just keeping the colors for the leaf and for the mango itself. Also I won't have a written form for this tutorial and the next tutorial I accidentally slice, sli um, slash my finger and I can't do with the heavy typing right now but as it heals I'll make sure I do the written part of this so those who are waiting for the written part of it please just bear with me okay and I'm a scan mango here so let's get straight into it I did it, opted out not to do the wood in the tutorial because I felt it was taking a bit too much time so I'm just going to use the bezier tool and I'm going to go over this mango and very roughly just fix the edges of this mango All right, you have time to do this but I need to I have a tutorial so I want to get this to you as quickly as possible I think um, even the third tutorial won't have unless it's an infographic I don't think he's going to have a, a written component to it so what I'll do, I'll probably just do an infographic on the third day, which is next week, Thursday. Because I think, and then by, hopefully by the following Monday, I should be ready to, um, to type again. This is very difficult typing at the moment. Here is the elements for the mango now. Let's move this and look at it right here. And we can edit this. Okay, now when we're dealing with the mesh tool, you really want to make sure that you're using 0 0.4.0.48.1 and up. I'm using 0 0.92 of Inkscape, and this is the one where it's officially supported. Uh, it is in 0 0.48.1 as a as an opt-in option there you can add it um, I think you you have to go to properties and enable it and also there are some test builds that have it between those two or the test builds do have it between those two but if you for the sake of this tutorial we're using the officially supported 0 0.92 and It is, I think that's the latest version. Yeah, that's the latest version of Inkscape too. So, understanding the mesh gradient tool is to look at the individual gradient tool, the linear tool, and kind of just multiply it. So, what you're going to see is that this tool works very similar to what you know the gradient tool as as it is but it is converted into a lattice and that is essentially just um, a box of tables and rows so this is our mesh tool right here and to activate our mesh tool we simply just need to press it, press the box, and then we double click and that will apply the mesh to the object that we double click. And it will be divided into rows and columns. So rows and columns. And you see up here, they'll tell you how many rows and columns you are to choose. Now, when you're doing your design, your rows and columns are essentially where you think this gradient is going to fall on your shape. That's where, that's how you determine how many rows and columns you need. So right here, this mango, if I show you the previous version, this mango has gradient that comes across like this. And there's another line of color here, and there's a third line of color, 
and if you can see there is color here and there is color here as well as color here changes so if you look at this thing horizontally vertically sorry you can see that right here would be one column another column another column here would be one row another row for color and another row for color change and another row for color change at top so we've got about one two three four columns by one two three rows of color when you're also doing this for your own shape you want to consider that it's easier for your mind to conceive the gradient and to relate it to how the mesh operates if you rotate your object in a way that the gradients of your or expecting gradients of your of your object what you ex where you expect the color to change and fade on your object is parallel to the lines that form the lattice or the gradient mesh because it's easier for you to conceptualize where you're going to put this color if you have it rotated against the column and row format it's a bit more difficult to place where these where to get an even smooth gradient across the shape the way you want it so any other shape that you have try and make it make the shape parallel in terms of where the gradient is going to fall to the x or y planes of the gradient mesh so let's click it activate it we've got three rows four columns so i've made this shape even though i'm going to have it curved right here even though i want it curved in the end like this i'm making it vertical so that it in lines up with the columns so we're just going to go to the mesh here and double click and we notice that it takes the gold yellow color and phase it to a white and we see that because the grain is going to be along this axis mostly changing it this way will be easier for us in our minds to conceptualize and change if we look at the gradient mesh we see that we have two types of nodes three actually but we're going to go through the you're going to see the third one in a second this diamond node here represents the uh, gradient stop so this is an actual color and the fade is across the segment the line to another color so this is fading from the gold to the white and this is from the white to the gold and the gold to the white respectively the circle nodes are handles and allow you to edit how that gradient transfers across to the other node and this gives you the, the wonderful curve effect that helps to make the shape look real with the colors chosen when you start to turn it the curve will turn into this arrow Wait. if your mesh curve is pulled over the shape meaning it goes beyond the shape it begins to cut into the shape so you want to try to avoid this all right let's start actually adding some color here so i'm going to carry this closer and the gradient mesh tool has a way to crash sometimes so you may want to just if it, if it crashes then just save while you're doing your thing we notice that the colors are going to converge to this vertex here this um this very end of the mango of the fruit so we're gonna want to move our gradient stops so that it converges also please keep in mind that regular node tools do not work with the gradient mesh so 
you have things like transformational handles that you can add to it and um, snapping is not enabled for the gradient mesh to my understanding you can select more than one at, the, at a time but the functionality doesn't go too far beyond that so we want all of our colors to converge to the tip of this mango as best as possible good and then because it's a rounded shape we want to have the mesh sort of just go around so it's going to pull this handle and pull it around it's easy to get lost in the mesh because you have so many handles to deal with but you um take your time and work things out and try to get it as smooth as possible it's also going to converge at the top so we're just going to oopsie, converge at the top so you see that it's beginning to take this rounded form that resembles the curvature of the mango good and we're just going to continue that so we're basically just mimicking the curvature of our shape so it helps to have some foresight as to or some uh, a pictorial vi image in your mind as to the 3d look of your shape and how it will operate okay it's definitely going to curve in here All right, and it's going to have a little curve in right here. Bring this up. All right, I think this is going to curve in like this. And then it's going to curve up. Ever so slightly, this will curve down. That's right. Okay, so it's starting to look a bit more like it's the curves are starting to resemble more of the mango. And just gonna pull this in a bit. Alright, great. Alright, so we have the curves looking a bit like the mango. And uh, for the next points now we are going to see if we can carry these in these points to the side and carry this in this will be our shadow our drop shadow here our, our highlight our bounce highlight okay so let's begin to actually shade some of these in so you can see what we're talking about here this is going to be where our main shadow is and you see i've held shift to select all of them and as you select all of them mm -hmm. i select one for now and just color it this is a darker orange here and just color it in and we notice that as we use our dropper tool with D, it starts to color in this side of the mango. We want this side to be a lighter yellow. And yeah, lighter yellow. It's going to pull in a little bit. Good, and right here we can use a bright yellow. And essentially we're just filling in the colors. And we see it's taking a wonderful shape and the colors are coming out very beautifully. And you get to really, um, get to really 
see how much you know you can even come into the fill and stroke with control shift and f kind of darken areas that you want to darken and if we just press s we can see that the mango is really taking its shape and then it's up to you now to sort of just to play with this until you get the the um, contours that you're looking for until you're comfortable with the way the gradients wrap around your shape oh well, no this is a exceptional tool it um sorry about that door making some noise it really opens up the doors for the inkscape artists and gives you a lot of flexibility and the developer team the inkscape developer team have done really well to to give you a tool like this very very useful tool we're just taking our time and you know i could spend a good while here just fixing the the shape until I get exactly what I want spend a good while just fixing it and um, adjusting it just the way I want it to to give me that look looks good okay all right so just to finish it off and to make it look a bit more like what we had before you know you can definitely go into it and add your edits just gonna add some highlights right here reduce the opacity of these and how's that looking just gonna duplicate it I'm just gonna pick any color and that will remove the gradient and put it underneath and just blur this out and reduce the opacity Alright, and then what we can do now, we can add some of this texture to the leaves just to finish the, the mango so that it, it looks somewhat like what we, um, what we had in the first place. this out of the way okay and so zoom in a bit yeah, for 
this technique I just use banding which I it's the word I use for it I don't know if that's what it's called but it resembles when Inkscape scans a bitmap bitmap and the bitmap itself is the gradients of colors is transferred into bands of colors so the more bands of colors there are you know the more realistic that that gradient or that change in color looks so it's a nice technique to use when you want to add some dimension to your to your shapes but you don't feel like using an actual gradient it's a nice effect it works well for water and and air currents and so when you're vectorizing those and essentially you just duplicate select this angle to path and union just lift this above and paint it color green oh not union sorry let's just duplicate do control and D and go to path and intersection. Let's lift this up off. I'm not sure why you're not going above. Why are you not going above? Alright, I just have to redo it. Intersection, select this green and just put this underneath the stalk right here and you know, select this green again. Duplicate and go to path intersection and you can use a deeper green now and then you can even come in the middle of this this select this with shift and go to path and intersection and you can just line it up ever so slightly and line it up ever so slightly and then just remove the strokes good and then we can have the leaf that little crease in the leaf and put this below you can lift this up slightly change this to symmetric nodes and put this to the side I think just for this case, we're just going to show you one leaf for this because I don't, we didn't really want this to be about the leaves themselves, or else this will turn into a longer tutorial than is needed. But I'll just do one so that you can see it, and then good and then we have um, we can lift this up slightly and then we can use the top of this now to show where the highlights coming from and we 
you can use the banding on the highlights as well. But definitely when I have more time, I'll go over all of it. Okay, so that's just the one leaf so that we can see the sort of style I applied. The leaves right here and I applied it to all three of them. All right then. Let's add the mango point here. All right, so and there we have our mango. gradient mesh fruit just turn it to the side if you like this material you can give it a thumbs up um, as always subscribe and like I promise I'll get this to this written tutorial to you as soon as my finger heals if you have any more queries about gradient mesh feel free to post your queries in the comments